Hello everybody, my name is Aaron aka Pulling Teeth and welcome back to the WWE 2K22 Universe Mode and we are on Raw and we are kicking things off once again with the Hardcore Champion. Very much aware that this seems to be a frequent thing at the minute, the rivalry between Ilya Dragunov and Machine Gun Kelly, of all people, has been really heating up and has been kicking off the show a lot recently here on Raw. It seems very much that Dragunov and uh, MGK have been back and forth in this feud with wins over each other. We believe it's probably going to culminate at Extreme Rules with the title on the line. But as of right now, I believe they are having another non-title match tonight. It's something turned into a bit of like a best of seven or a best of five series. It's turned into something like that, unofficially. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think they want a piece. Very competitive rivalry between the two though. Later tonight as well folks, in your main event this evening, your world's champion Kyle O'Reilly is going to be taking on the Viper Randy Orton. Also believe that the women's champion AJ Lee will be in action tonight, taking on the former champion Kaylee Ray. And from what I understand, your new European champion as of last week, Rancid Adam, is offering an open challenge tonight for anyone to come and try and take that European championship from him. That will follow this match. MGK is out here tonight all by his lonesome once again we keep hearing he's representing the headbangers but who are the headbangers we are still yet to find out maybe he'll introduce them to us at the pay-per-view who knows only time will tell as of right now he's out here on his own once again taking on the hardcore champion Ilya Dragunov see how these two do so they've been back and forth in this rivalry which Dragunov considers to be a little bit of an embarrassment since MGK is not traditionally a wrestler he's traditionally a musician oh but springboard went for a missile drop kick someone's been training MGK maybe that's who part of his headbangers is maybe someone who has been training MGK is on the roster It might explain why he suddenly got all these moves that you wouldn't expect him to have. Dragging off, throwing MGK into the corner. And then head first. Good God. Back elbow, though, from Kelly. Start swinging. You know, there's not going to be an awful lot fancy from MGK. He's got a few tricks up his sleeve, as we've seen. Let's drop down with the neck breaker there. He's got him in a kick to the spine. And you get now jab to the jaw. More straps, but big overhead chop to Kelly. MGK got him in the headlock, punch to the face. Goes behind. Russian leg sweep to the Russian. It kind of works. A straight right hand to the jaw from Kelly. And you go for another one. And then off the ropes. Went for a leg drop. Oh, God, that chop there. That was like to the back of the neck. Reverse suplex. MGK's legs getting all caught up in the ropes. There's advantages and disadvantages to having such a lanky frame like MGK has. The advantages, it's very easy to reach the ropes to get out of stuff. The disadvantage is, it's very easy to hit the ropes when you don't want to. Oh, 
Dragunov now has got him up clothesline. Heavy duty one and another. Caught MGK's leg. Back heel trip. Pulls MGK over. Is he going for a pin? Yes, he is. One. Two. Two count. MGK managed to kick out of it. One thing you've got to give him is he's got more toughness than you'd expect him to have. So I should say this is not his usual uh, forte. Another camera working. Dragunov just charging in. I mean, Dragunov might have been thinking going for that torpedo headbutt, but MGK keeps getting back to his feet before Dragunov can truly set it up. MGK has felt it before. It's damn near knocked him out. I think it did knock him out at one point. MGK rolls through. I think he calls this the drum roll. Just slapping him in the face and then gets pushed off. Disrespect from Kelly. He's up top. What's he thinking? Whatever he's thinking, he's got some distance to cover here. Dives in, crowns him with the axe handle. Springs off the ropes, goes for the senton, ends up in the fetal position on his back. Dragunov went for that torpedo headboard. MGK swatted him away. He saw it coming. He's felt it before. Is he thinking Kellycopter? Spins him around. Kellycopter pulls him away from the ropes. Holds him in the cover. One. Two. Oh, Dragunov just, just popped that shoulder up. Last possible second. MGK jumping in with the elbow. Is he setting up for another helicopter? I think he is. If it don't work the first time, go for it a second. Why the hell not? And bang! Slams him down. One. Two. MGK takes it to two and one. Somewhat surprisingly. They're running with the clotheslines there. That match was fast paced. I'm kind of surprised that MGK has got the victory there over Dragunov. He just took full advantage of the fact that Dragunov just seemed far too focused on hurting MGK rather than winning the match. I'd say I really want to know. I really want to know who's been training this man because whoever it is might have trained him to the point of being able to take the hardcore championship at his first pay-per-view. Well, folks, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE European Championship. And say it's an open challenge. Adam laid it out on the line before the show and said anyone could come out here and challenge for the European Championship. And lucky who has accepted the challenge. It looks to be the Prince himself, Finn Balor. We haven't seen a lot of Finn this season. But he is here tonight. Challenging for the European Championship. The Prince himself. Of course we know that currently... Two members of the league hold titles here on Raw. Adam's got the European Championship. Kyle O'Reilly has himself the World's Championship. Of course, that could all change tonight if Adam loses this championship. He loses this title match. He's got himself a hell of a competitor that has stepped up to the plate. We know that Adam is not afraid to brawl you know that Adam is not afraid to step in the ring with pretty much anyone I think he's too kind of insane to be afraid to do that but he is here tonight and he is taking on the Prince Finn Balor he won the championship in a in a huge multi-man match last week well it's a very different story when you're taking on somebody one-on-one -on -one. very different strategy The 
I also don't know whether Adam's going to be coming alone here or not. I suppose we're about to find out. Bala looks set and ready. Let's get the champion out here. And it certainly looks like the champion is not coming alone. He has got himself the enforcer with him. He has got himself Bobby Lashley. Bobby taking up centre stage despite the fact that it is Adam who is in fact the champion. <laughs> Adam. This man is insane. And we all know he's insane. He's kind of weirdly almost doesn't fit with Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Lashley as a team. But it's working for them. Let's send it down to the ring to our faceless ring announcer for the introductions on this one. Introducing the challenger from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 190 pounds, Finn Balor. And introducing the champion from Parks Unknown, weighing in. 219 pounds. He is the WWE European Champion, Cloud Adam. European Champion, Rancid Adam, taking on the Prince Finn Balor. This is going to be an interesting one. Referee holding up that championship. That's what it's all about in this one. Let's ring the bell, folks. We want to get into it. Here we go. Already a quick jab from Adam and a kick to the ribs from Balor. Chop square to the chest. Spinning back kick already. These two very back and forth. Adam going up top early. So he's thinking, he's thinking frog splash, but Balor got the knees up. Adam runs past Balor and goes for a chop. He's connecting now with the strike combination. Nice into the flatliner. And corkscrew sent on there from Adam. Both these men are going to fly around the ring if they want to. They're both incredibly agile. Confetti goes for the back sent on, somehow does connect, despite it looked like Balor was trying to get to his feet. And it was a little quicker there on the draw. Nice front slam from Balor. Getting right in Adam's face. Balor proving he will not be intimidated. Another slaps, the strikes, float over, drop kick to the side of Adam's head. If he had some screws loose before, he's got a few more loose now. You can probably hear him rattling around in there. Stop to the ribs and a kick again to the jaw. Balor goes for another stomp. Adam gets out of the way. I knew this one was going to be quick paced. The strike combinations from Adam. Pops a destroyer out of nowhere. That's a very dangerous move from Adam. And he will pull them out of absolutely nowhere when he wants to. The circus destroyers as he calls them. Now Adam going up top. Is he thinking Adam bomb? He is. And he connects already. We said this was fast paced. I didn't think it would be this fast paced. One. Two. Three. With relative ease, Adam puts away Balor. When he hit that destroyer, I think he must have knocked Balor out cold. Balor kicked out on instinct alone. Still your European champion. Somewhat surprising at how quick Adam was able to put away a former Universal champion like Finn. And I think Finn's feeling the same way. And moving on from that interesting development that we just had in the fact that Rance Adam put away Finn Balor in record time in that match. Moving on to another champion here. We have got ourselves a women's champion, AJ Lee. 
we've seen in recent weeks that Rhea Ripley has stepped up to the plate to AJ and been a bit of a thorn in the side. But AJ is here tonight on her own, taking on the former champion Kaylee Ray. But you gotta know, Rhea's gonna be watching. She's gonna be watching very carefully and very closely. Rhea wants AJ's title. And I don't think she'll stop at much to try and get it. But first, the woman who uh, lost the championship to AJ Lee, the woman who held the title from day one in universe mode and defended it multiple times over, had herself a hell of a run. She beat the likes of Liv Morgan. She beat the likes of Trish Stratus. But she couldn't beat AJ Lee. AJ cashed in money in the bank. But did it in advance. She didn't do it last minute and pop up on Kaylee after a match. She announced it heading into a show. It main event at that Raw. And Kaylee just couldn't keep up with AJ that night. So she's got a lot to prove here tonight. See if she can keep up with the champ. See if she can get herself back in title contention. Looks like they're staring daggers through each other. Referee rings the bell. Here we go. Both women go for forearms. AJ handsprings. Catches her. Into a tilt to all head scissors. Already AJ just trying to outclass Kaylee. Kaylee is going to be the bigger and the stronger into a code breaker. And now working on the knee of AJ. Really hammering down on that knee as well. That exposed knee. No knee pads. Which some say is a very uh, weird thing to do in wrestling. But there you go. And then over the knee. Russian leg sweep from AJ. It was very confusing the other week when we had AJ and AJ in the same match. <laughs> Jumping flatliner from Kaylee. What's Kaylee thinking? Is she thinking maybe going for the Swanton? She puts people away with it. No, she's going for a diving splash instead. Interesting that Kaylee now is really trying to work over AJ. She's slowing the pace down, which is not something I expected. One. Just a one count, and the champ kicks out. Conspicuous by her absence, obviously, is Rhea Ripley. We expected Rhea to be making an appearance, but she hasn't done th thus far. Kaylee just took that form and threw one of her own. And then a snap suplex from Kaylee. This match has been almost all Kaylee's. Other than the very first opening flurry from AJ. Nice up kick from the champ. Back to that handspring. Rolls back through into another head scissors. That's twice she's used that and twice she's used it to full effect. And just ramming Kaylee's head onto the mat. AJ not going to make the same mistake before as to not following up. Standing slice bread. Into a pin. Referee in perfect position. One. Two. Just a two count. Referee has a very vacant look on his face, doesn't he? All the time. Like he just doesn't know where he is. Oh wait, AJ! She's got herself as well. She's got Kaylee trapped in the Black Widow. Could you be tapping Kaylee out already? Kaylee though now escapes it. Sidewalk slams out. Standing AJ up to her feet. Was in a jumping flatliner again from Kaylee Ray. Stomp to the arm, AJ rolls over, but that might be exactly what Kaylee wanted her. Got her trapped in a bow and arrow. And a very painful hold. You're not meant to bend that way, but AJ floats out of it, tries to go for a pin. Kaylee quickly kicks her off. AJ goes behind, back over the knee into a neck breaker. Floats quickly into a pin. One, two. Kaylee pushes AJ off. Kaylee's starting to struggle in this one now. AJ's turned this thing around. 
Elbow to the top of the head. Now stretching out the arm of Kaylee Ray. He managed to pull herself free. But he's struggling here in this one. Kick to the ribs from AJ. Punch to the face. More kick combinations into an X Factor. I think she'd rather call it an X Factor than a Bella Buster. She's trying to wring the arm out of its socket is AJ. You know in the back of AJ's head she's wondering where Rhea is. Nice springboard into a leg drop. She knows Rhea's going to be watching. AJ's up top. Calling on Kaylee to get up to her feet. Dives in with a seated senton. She's calling for Kaylee to get back up. Is she thinking Black Widow again? She might have been, but Kaylee saw it coming. Caught her with a jawbreaker. Northern Light Suplex doesn't hold the bridge. Again, heads back up top. She might be thinking that Swanton again. I say again, she didn't go for it last time. Nope, diving splash. Strange that she is not going for that Swanton. Jawbreaker though from AJ. Punch of the face, standing slice, bread. Covers her, refs in, one, two. Now oh, Kaylee again kicks out. There's a lot on the line for Kaylee here. There's less on the line for AJ, but this could be an opportunity for Kaylee to prove that it was just a fluke that she lost that championship and she wants it back. But she is caught in the Black Widow again. And she has to tap out. She had no choice. AJ had her caught and tangled up in the Black Widow. And once you're caught in that thing, it's very difficult to escape from. AJ walking away victorious tonight. And there's Rhea. We knew she'd be lurking. These two are on a collision course. It's main event time, folks. We have got ourselves a one-on-one -on -one non title match. Randy Orton is here challenging the world's champion Kyle O'Reilly to this match tonight. We haven't seen much of Randy here in universe mode. This will be a hell of a way to make an impression. Who shut up our ring announcer, by the way? Since he did the announcements for the European Championship match, he's seemingly not said anything since. Has someone turned his mic off? I think someone must have turned his mic off. Yeah! Anyway, we know that Kyle O'Reilly has got a date with Brock Lesnar at Extreme Rules. And he's taking on someone who Brock has previously faced. Brock has previously faced in uh, in pay-per-view matches, or at least one pay-per-view match off the top of my head. And Brock absolutely destroyed Randy that night. Busted Randy Orton open in one of the most brutal ways possible. But Randy and Brock are from the same class. They arrived in WWE about the same time in 2002. There was a very interesting uh, OVW class that all emerged around the same time. Randy Orton, John Cena, Batista, Shelton Benjamin and Brock Lesnar. That's a, that's a pretty damn good class when you think about it. Four of the five of those men have been multi-time world champions. And the other is one of the most decorated tag team United States and Intercontinental champions we've got. So you see why Kyle would accept a match with Randy tonight. It's a good warm-up leaning into facing Brock. But of course, Kyle is out here on his own. He hasn't brought Adam, and he hasn't brought Lashley with him. Which he very well could have, since we know that Adam didn't really, uh, didn't really exert himself too much earlier tonight. He put away Finn Balor in no time flat. Well, Kyle have the same look tonight against Randy. Yeah. I suppose time will tell. Air guitar in the World's Championship. Yeah. 
Of course, a win tonight for Randy Orton will do wonders for him. It could skyrocket him up the rankings here for the world title. Beating the champion would do that. It's what got Brock Lesnar back into the title picture. Brock got a huge win over Kyle O'Reilly while Kyle was feuding with the Heartbreak Kid. That got Brock into this uh, position of number one contender. So Randy Orton could follow suit. There's assuming Kyle is able to walk, uh, walk away with the championship after facing Brock. Referee rings the bell and... Wait a second. Speak of the... Speak of the devil. Brock Lesnar is out here and he's in the corner of Randy Orton. Something I didn't expect to see. Brock gained an up close and personal view of this match. Kyle just launched Randy halfway across the ring there. Kyle, the smaller of the two, considerably so. But he is also brutal as hell when he wants to be. Randy says he can throw you too and holds it in for a pin. Held a bridge in there. Randy up to the middle rope. You don't see this too often. Crowns the champion though. Randy now working on the arm of Kyle. Kyle back up, kicks to the ribs. Randy just slaps Kyle O'Reilly in the face. No respect from Randy Orton at all. Kyle captures suplex. And so Kyle can throw you around like nobody's business, which works when you're going into a match with Brock Lesnar, who also just throws you around like nobody's business. Look at Brock. Brock is watching this so intently. He's watching the technique that Kyle executed that triangle with. And oh, and that's probably not a smart move. I think Orton's just trying to get in the head of Kyle here. Oh, snap! Power slam. He caught Kyle running in. Vintage Orton with that one. To quote Michael Cole. One. Just a one count and Kyle quickly kicked out. Orton's got Kyle back up to his feet and starts punching him in the face. And now he's caught him. Angle slam or Olympic slam, depending on who you ask. Orton just yelling at Kyle. And he's got the legs trapped. Orton might be thinking bow and arrow. Here he is. Interesting that Orton's gone for a bow and arrow. You don't see that too often. Nice escape. A quick kick out there from Randy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, quick kick out from Randy. I was correct first time. I shouldn't second guess myself. Kyle, they're wringing Orton's arm over that top rope. Of course, the ropes are steel cables. Kick to the lower spine now. Randy catching the leg into a dragon screw. Brock's suddenly paying far less attention, it looks like. He was earlier, very intently. Now he looks like he do not want to be there anymore. Oh, Kyle went for the up kick and Orton reversed it. But another exploder. Dropping Kyle down. Orton just stalking Kyle now. Kicking him in the ribs. And again, Brock obviously is going to want Kyle hurt. Orton's so methodical, so smooth in his approach. And a stomp to the top of the forehead. It goes for the pin. Referee charges around to get in position. One, two. Oh, the world champ does kick out. He is still in this one. I'd say that it's not often you'd say that the world's heavyweight champion is an underdog in a match, but Randy Orton might have just put him away with an RKO. One, two, three. Kyle was far too distracted in the fact that Brock was just stood there at ringside. Brock didn't even need to get involved. And Kyle was completely thrown out of his game. And Randy Orton put him away. Kyle barely got out of the blocks in that one. Every time he tried, he just didn't seem focused. He definitely should not have come out here on his own. He has a groove. Don't know why he decided not to bring them with him. The RKO, that was all she wrote. Good night, Wells champ. One, two... Three. Here is your winner, the Viper, Randy Orton. 
So unplug the ring announcers mic back in clearly. I shouldn't have mentioned anything. But thank you everybody so much for joining me in this one. It has been a genuine pleasure as per usual. Like, comment, subscribe. You all know the drill by now. All the fun stuff. And we'll see you at ECW. Bye.